So I showed you in previous videos the flaw with Romans 9 concerning two cases. One is Pharaoh. So Romans 9, it is rich with Calvinism, supposedly. Calvinists, they will use this like they're John 3.16 and Matthew 24. So one, Pharaoh. I showed it in the video that it is definitely completely wrong. We see another one where not only Pharaoh, it also talks about Esau and Jacob. So we saw Esau. The third one we're going to see is the vessels. And then, you know what, I'll just do a fourth one. The fourth one will be the rest of the context. So the funny thing is this, is that there are these Calvinists who are screaming when I debunk Pharaoh, oh, you forgot Esau. And then when I debunk Esau, then they'll go, oh, you forgot Pharaoh. Or they'll say, oh, you forgot the rest of the vessels or the rest of the context. The thing is this, is because in that video, I'm only covered one case. That's it. By the way, if you look up online on our, my videos on Calvinism, I already covered this. I covered not just Pharaoh and Esau, but the remainder of Romans 9, actually. But the thing is, is that, see, these people, they think that I'm just, uh, I'm ignoring the rest of the context. No, it's because the reason why is I'm dealing with each case separately. That's why. Now, I'm going to show you this, all in unison, what Romans 9 is referring to. So let's debunk the entire chapter, shall we? I'm not going to cover Pharaoh or Esau. I already debunked that. But I'm going to explain the whole thing. Look at Romans chapter 9, and then let's cover the vessels of wrath, okay? Then we'll see the entire context. Verse 20, Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed uh, say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Has not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles? Okay, so it seems like in this passage, that in Romans 9, and we saw verses 20 through 24 in this passage, that God made some vessels fit to wrath and others that are fit for mercy. So none of these vessels, which is referring to humans, none of us have a right to say, why did you made me thus that way? So if God selected Brother Jack here, as a vessel of wrath, he has no right to say, why did you make me that way to burn in hell? And then if he made one vessel for mercy, like Brother Chris right here, he doesn't have the right to say, why did you make me that way? No, God has the right because he is sovereign. He can pick and choose which vessel he can choose for wrath, which vessel he can fit for mercy. So that's what Calvinists will teach, which is very unfair. You can't just say that God can pick and choose who goes to heaven and hell, and you have no say on the matter. So in other words, if you're a homosexual and you're going to hell, sorry, too late. You're going to go to hell even if you don't want to. I mean, that is cruel. Who teaches that way? Who teaches that way? Now, Calvinists, they like to get philosophical and they say, oh, no, that's not what we're saying, that God picks those who goes to hell. We're just saying that he elects those who are saved. That's it. Well, if he does that, then that means he already chose who's going to hell then. But they don't want to resort to that. But I'm not going to argue with them with that one. Okay, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the vessels that are fit for wrath and vessels fit for mercy. And neither vessel can, ha can say to God, why did you make me thus? What does this mean? It's very easy. Look at Jeremiah 18. Jeremiah 18. You know what the simple answer is? That Israel, so Romans 9 mentioned about Gentiles and Israel's, right? So they're one example. And then they failed to see that Israel and any other, excuse me, any other vessels that are made for honor and dishonor depended on whether they serve God or not. Boom. When God has a vessel fit for wrath and a vessel fit for mercy, it was conditioned upon. That is the basic flaw of Calvinism. They make it uh, unconditional. There's always a condition involved. That is the weak, that is the one pivotal argument you need to use in every Calvinist verse. 
find if there's a condition involved. And when there's a condition involved, then you know why God chose that vessel for wrath. Because he, in that condition, he violated it. And then he chose that vessel for mercy. Why? Because that vessel followed the condition where he can be fitted for mercy. And then when you follow that condition, no vessel has the right to say to God, why did you make me thus this way? God can pick and choose whoever he wants. Those who serve God, God will pick that person for heaven. And you can't have any say on the matter, all right? If any of you receive Christ for your salvation, for example, you have no say that you can party and go to hell even if you wanted to right now. Tough, you're going to heaven. See that? Those of you who want to reject Jesus Christ and go your own way to heaven, you have no right to say you're a vessel for wrath and you can't change God's mind. That simple, see? Ding, duh. It's like a duh statement. Duh, you know? Only a deep-seated Calvinist who does nothing but just sit and sit at home and study books, books, books all day will come up with a complicated argument like that when all you needed was to just think back for a moment and go, oh, duh, it's like easy, yeah, free will. Now, you made that up, Pastor. No, look at the vessels here, Jeremiah 18, verse 4. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Right? Because the potter has the right over the clay. But keep reading. Then came the word of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. Verse 8. If that nation... Ooh, condition, right? Against whom I have pronounced, turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. Did you read that? That potter says, I can make you a vessel fit for wrath. But see, when that vessel follows a condition here, that if I turn from the evil and serve God, then God says, I will repent of the evil, change my mind. I thought he's sovereign, right? That you can't change his mind? See that? The thing is this. He is sovereign, yes. He can have a vessel fit for wrath, vessel fit for mercy. But it's based on a condition. See, it's that simple, okay? It's that simple. Let's also look at verse 10. If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice. See that condition, if. Then I will repent of the good, wherewith I said I would benefit them. See that? He can make that vessel who is fit for mercy and blessing for wrath again. Now look at chapter 19, verse 4. Chapter 19, verse 4. Potter can do whatever he wants with the vessel, so you Calvinist vessels out there have no right to tell the potter, oh, no, no, we're going to do it the Calvinist way, the Calvinist way. There is no condition involved. You have no say on that. The potter can do whatever he wants. If he wants to put a condition there, he can put a condition there. And you Calvinists can't change God's mind on that one. Let's look at, that's, yeah, brother, there you go. Look at chapter 19 and verse 4. Chapter 19 and verse 4. Because they have forsaken me. See that? Based on their actions, right? And have estranged this place, and have burned incense in it unto other gods, whom neither they uh, nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah, and have filled this place with the blood of innocence. That's why look at verse 11. Notice that verse 11, because they did that action, and shalt say unto them, thus saith the Lord of hosts, even so will I break this people and this city as one breaketh a potter's vessel that cannot be made whole again, and they shall bury them in Tophet till there be no place to bury. Look at that. Because based on that action, their free choice of rebelling against God, God made them a vessel fit for wrath. Now look at 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. This is not just Israel in Romans 9. This includes everybody else. Look at 2 Timothy 2, verse 20 through 22. 2 Timothy 2, 20 through 22. So this Calvinism is completely debunked when all you have to do is compare Jeremiah 19, uh, 18, 19, 19, and 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2, these three areas. 
Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20. But in a great house there are not only, look at this, vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to what? Dishonor. Boom. See that? There are those vessels that are honorable. Vessels that are dishonorable. Based on what? Keep reading. If a man, oh, condition again. See that? If a man therefore purge himself from these. See, God didn't make him do it. It's free will. Purge himself from these. He shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the what? There's your sovereignty there. God's going to use him. Master's use and prepared unto every good work. God's going to use that. And the potter can do whatever he wants. See, fit for the master's use. Verse 22. Flee also youthful lust. Look at that. Now it's telling you to follow that free will choice. So that you can be a vessel that's honorable. Why would it tell you to do the action? If God's supposed to control the person behind it, right? You have to do this. Flee also useful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, and charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. See that? You have free will. Your action has to be involved. Now, look back at Romans 9. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. So, we see right here that these people... That they just want to harp on election, election, election. The potter can do whatever you want. You can't tell God what to do. Because these would fail to include verse 15 and 16. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth. Boom, you see that? Favorite Calvinist line. See, you can't put your free will there. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of what? God that showeth mercy. It's all God. Let's also look at verse 18. Okay, so the reason why I skipped that is because we already covered verses uh, 10, through six, uh, 10 through 13 at a video about Esau. 14 through 16 we covered today. 17 through... Uh, through, well, verse 17, we covered that in our other video about Pharaoh. Now let's cover the rest, 18. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. So God can pick and choose whose heart he hardened, whose people he'll have mercy, says the Calvinist. Verse 19, thou wilt say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault? For who hath, look at this, resisted his will. No one can resist God's will. So there's no free will involved. But it's very simple. Because all you have to do is, what did we look in all of these verses? Okay, so I'm not destroying the context here. The context will fit with all of these things, which I'm going to tell you. <clears throat> the point is, it is true that God has the right to choose whoever to have mercy or reprobation. He has the right to choose. And guess what? It's more simple than you think. And he chooses those who are saved and serve him to receive mercy. That's it. <laughs> And if you do not get saved, then guess what? Then he chooses you to be a reprobate in his eyes. And that's God's will, and mankind's will cannot undo it. So you, so you bunch of uh, Mormons, Muslims, Catholics can scream on top of your lungs. You liberals can scream on top of your lungs. Free right, free right. God is so cruel to damn these kind of people to hell. Why can't he tolerate the way I want to do things? You have no right. You can't resist his will. His will right there is, you receive my son and get saved in Jesus Christ. You serve me so you can be a finer vessel for honor. That's his will. You can't resist that. And you bunch of lazy, backsliding Christians, if you want to find a loophole around it, you can't. That's why you have to follow that. Isn't that more simple than you think? See, that was very simple. That doesn't mean there's no free will, absolutely, etc. No, it means this. It means that when you see free will... First, you see that condition, always condition. If you're saved and if you serve God, then God, no matter what, you can't, your will can't change that, okay? Your will can't change what God will and ordain. If you're saved and you serve me, boom, you're going to heaven. If you serve me, you're going to be a finer vessel than before. If you're lost, you're a vessel fit to wrath. And no matter what you say, you can't change my will on that one. If you want to rebel and uh, do wicked things, you're going to be a dishonorable vessel. 
No shortcut, no loophole, no other scripture to justify your sin. Now, that's so simple. It's so simple to debunk sovereignty. Now, let's look at Exodus 20. Exodus 20. I'm going to show you these two verses. Well, I'll just show you one. Just show you one for time's sake. Let's look at Exodus 20, and then I'll do one more drawing. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5 through 6. Verses 5 through 6. Remember the verse mentioned that God, God can show mercy to whom he will have mercy, and whoever he wants to harden, he wants to harden? Look at this. This is always based on a condition. So, uh, verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. See, God is telling them, commanding them to do this action. They have to do it themselves. Free choice. He can't make them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon, upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. See that? So God will visit them evil, vessel fitted to destruction. But look at this one now. And showing mercy unto thousands of them. Look at that. See, he can show mercy on whom he will have mercy, right? Based on what? That love me and keep my commandments. Look at that. See, it's always based on their free will, their actions. It's always based on that. And God, he will ordain which one as a result consequently. A vessel fitted for wrath and a vessel fitted for mercy. Now that is more simple than you think. It's not some deep philosophical argument. It's so simple that even a little child can do that. See that?